There's one more topic I want to go over and then we'll change to a new subject. And that topic is how do I get Pac-Man to change direction? Pac-Man can move to the right. We all know that. We've seen Pac-Man move to the right before. Oh man, wrong tool again. Here Pac-Man is moving to the right. And Pac-Man can move down. But if you think about it, we've only ever seen Pac-Man move to the right and down. Pac-Man never moves diagonally. I'm going to label these uh, vectors real quick. This vector will be D for down. This vector will be R for right. And what we want to see is Pac-Man moving diagonally, just like this. And I'm going to label that vector V. Pac-Man never moves diagonally. Again, give him a break. He was made in 1980, okay? 23 years ago. But we have the technology. We can make him stronger and better, and we can make it so that he moves along this diagonal. And it's actually really easy. We can do it by adding vectors. Let's see how that's done. We can add the D vector and the R vector and we'll actually get this uh, V vector. D plus R equals V. That's it. And adding vectors is exactly like multiplying and dividing vectors like I showed you before. I'll break it down into the XY components for you v equals, so let's take the d, let's take the x component of it, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to add the x components of our two input vectors, and that will give us the output vector. So let's add the x component, x plus x equals x. The x of the d and the x of the r equals the x of the v. Uh, now let's go to the y components. The y component of the d vector plus the y component of the r vector equals the y component of the v vector, and we're done. This works equally well for subtraction. I can replace this addition with subtraction. In fact, I'll just do it in a gray. You can just add a subtraction down here. So it works d plus r or d minus r. It works the same way. Uh, so before we move on to see how it works in the code, I want to show you some cool properties of, of vector addition. Uh, in order to add d and r, you can think of it like this. If I take d and stick it on the end of r, just like this, then the endpoint where D ends up will be the result of the added vector. And you can see that V ends right here at this endpoint. And why can I do that? Why am I allowed to take D and move it over here? Well, it's because if you remember the definition of a vector, and I'll draw out the definition of D for you, it is a, an orientation or a, a rotation and a length or magnitude, right? So D knows where it's heading. D knows how long it is, but D doesn't know where it is. Vectors know where they're going, but they don't know where they are. Notice how there's no position anywhere in this definition. So that means that we can move vectors around all we want and it's still the same vector. So this vector over here and this vector on the right, they're both the same vector. I can move it, oh, I can move D so it sits right here at the end of R and I haven't changed a thing. And we can use that to add R and D and so the beginning of R and the end of D is our result vector, V. So that's pretty cool. So. Now let's go over to the code and see how this is implemented. So here you can see I've added two new functions, uh, two operator overloads for plus and for minus. Just like before, they're const 
and they take in a vector as input and they return a vector as output. But I want to bring your attention to this new syntax. Uh, this ampersand means pass by reference. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it means that instead of making a copy of the vector for the, when the function runs, it will actually use the vector that's passed into it. Uh, and if that doesn't ring a bell, then I'm linking here a video, a good video on pass by reference that uh, you can watch and see what that's all about. And this const on the left means that we promise not to change the reference that's passed in. Uh, so the end result is the same because you can you can take these things out and it's actually the exact same thing. So I don't want you to get too confused. But you're going to see this a lot in game development. Pass by const reference. Because it's a lot faster. You don't have to make a copy of the vector when you pass it in. So I'm just including it here because I want you to see it and get used to it. But effectively it's the same thing as if you had just taken them out. So let's go down and implement these functions. We're going to create a vector to return with our value in it. And here's the equation on the right, v of uh, dot x. Oh wait, I can't do that. I already have a v. Vector r will be our return vector, not v, because v is our input vector. You can see it right here. So r dot x equals x plus v dot x, and r dot y equals x plus v dot y. Very good, return r. Now for operator minus, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to do it all in one line, which we can do now that we have a constructor. There's nothing inherently uh, better about doing it all in one line. It looks a little bit neater. It's not always better to have code all in one line. But in this case, I think it looks a little bit more concise. We construct a vector, and for the x part of the vector, we just put our x part of the formula that we have, and for the y part, here's the y part after the comma. It looks a little bit, I think, more like our formula does, so that's good. Let's go down to the main function. Ooh. Uh, there it is. And you can see I've set up a right vector and a down vector. Here's the picture on the right. And I'm going to add the two vectors and we're going to see what we get. There we go. Pac-Man's new velocity is 4, negative 1. Oh man, looks like I made a mistake somewhere. It should be 4, negative 5. So finally I've made a mistake. Let's see where we made the mistake. Let's go up and take a look at our, up, oh, and here it is. I said x plus v dot y, that should be a y, so. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay honest. I'm gonna leave the mistakes in there because it'll help you see that even good programmers make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. So Pac-Man's new velocity is four, negative five which is exactly what we expect it to be. Pac-Man is moving down and to the right. Because 5 is negative, that means Pac-Man is moving down and 4 is positive, so that's the x value and Pac-Man is moving right. Great. So now you have all the tools that you should need to change the velocity, the movement direction of your characters by adding and subtracting vectors. And uh, next time we're going to see how all this works in an actual game. No more of this command line junk. We're going to load up an actual game and see how you can use all the stuff that you've learned so far in a real game. I'll see you then.